Good morning, listeners and viewers. We've got another fantastic day ahead of us in our British Business Podcast series. This morning, I'm delighted to welcome Harvey Griffiths from Horizon, a business owner, a business person who's been around business pretty much all of his working life. Um, welcome, Harvey. Thanks Great to be here. Me. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. And um, can we just kick off with a tiny bit of background about you? I know we've got lots of things to talk about this morning. Would you be able to give us a, a sort of how you got into business in the first place? Yeah, I'm d- d- delighted to. Uh, d- d- fairly conventional route in the early days uh, through university uh, and then took on a couple of graduate training schemes. But I, I come from a family of business owners, uh, or certainly my father was a property guy in London, estate agency uh, in the early days. And I think growing up with that, uh, saw, saw how he developed uh, his business and, and, and thrived. And, and I think working through my corporate life, that was always nagging in my mind. Could I do something myself? What could it be? How do I go about it? And, uh, and that was the early days, really. So uh, I think it's no surprise that I followed the property real estate route, uh, something I've, I've I feel very, uh, uh, I'm very lucky to, to, to be in something that, that, that is about my sort of core values and, uh, and what I enjoy in life. And, and, and we'll talk perhaps a little more about that as we go. So, yeah, it was a bit of a transition. Uh, I didn't leave school at 16 and, and go straight into it. I, saw, I sort of probably started off a bit wrong, but found my way into, into where I, I should have been over a series of years. So um, pleased to be here. And um, um, what was the first exploration into that business what was the first business well I started buying property in the okay. 90s uh, I, I started buying property uh, while I was at work and and I was using my my earnings and income to put a bit away and and and, and just looked and thought you know this is something I could do long term uh, it needs a long-term view uh, it doesn't pay off straight away I was probably doing it when not too many were in the early 90s we saw price falls yeah which was cool. something most people can't really get their head around <laughs> these days but 30 years ago, prices were falling and uh, you know sometimes you've got to be lucky, lucky in the right place at the right time and and uh, that got me started so I was, I was I was buying picking up a couple of properties uh first one to live in at age 22 I think and uh that went quite well and and just started to buy more over time as they came along so uh that was that was the start point and then I was running these two things uh, and then there's a sort of a natural transition across where y- you know that it can sustain it, you can go full time. And uh, but that was some time later. You know, I was still working away, and it's a it's a passive kind of investment. So you do a bit of work to buy, it produces a bit of income, and and you keep your work going. So that, that's. Was there a trigger moment? Was there that epiphany moment in life where you thought now's the time I want to be 100 percent with this? Yeah, and I think it's quite difficult to leave the security of a good job. And so, you know, with a young family, you keep that going. <clears throat> and uh, I've never been afraid to work pretty hard and do do, do, do more than the day job. And uh, yeah, 2008 was really a key moment. It was, wow. at that what point, I'd built quite a bit of property. Uh, I, I, I mean, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but it was quite substantial at that point. And, and it was enough to go out full time. But I was still enjoying my day work. I was learning a lot. And in 2008, you know, we saw some major dislocation. Yeah. And I remember I was midway through buying a property, a small regional property, and the owner wanted to sell it. And I was hesitating, and they were phoning me saying, look, you, 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 and I was cautious. And they said, well, look, what, what price can you do the deal at? And we agreed about half what I'd agreed nine months ago. And I still hesitated. And I sort of sort of lie awake at night thinking, this is either still a stupid idea because no one's touching it or it'll be the best deal I've ever done. And when you look at first principles and work it out, you don't, you shut out all the advice, you shut out all the noise, you shut out the news and you just work out for yourself whether that's a good deal in this situation for the long term. And it was, and I did it and it's probably the best deal I ever did. And, and, I, and that's the moment at which I look back and thought I had the courage to go against the crowd. I had the courage to make my own decision. I had the courage to pull the trigger and and from then on i really went for it you know and and from then time, on i was working for myself effectively uh and and doing a number of things that got me into my own business business life wow sorry you were about to say michael no, sorry, no i was going i was going to say about the and at that time 2008 key critical moment as you said the recession that's right yeah it, it, I like it. i'd love to jump in here Michael, because <laughs> yeah. you know some of yeah. the things that you said harvey 
fascinating because in the early 90s, wow, you'll remember interest rates at 15%, for example. Yeah, that's right. You know, look where interest rates seem to be heading now. So you, you've seen that in the past. So you know the effect that it has on, on your industry. You've seen the crash that happened in 2008 and, mm. and onwards and the, the cuts. So what does that look like for you now for the future of where we're at when you look at the news each day with energy rising costs of borrowing? Well, it feels like we've been here before, but every situation is slightly different. And uh, in those days, it was fairly short-lived. I was probably a bit younger and a bit less wise. It does take... I, I mean, firstly, the, the thing is, we've all been through a long period of our own businesses, so we've seen the cycles. And it it can... You know, this doesn't happen overnight. It can take 20 or 30 years to really understand what you do, how you do it, and how to deal with it. And so... You know, this doesn't phase me particularly, but again, I'm a first principles person. I look at what the economic indicators are doing. What does that mean in terms of economic activity, employment, borrowing, debt, and and, and what does that mean for the opportunity today? And so uh, the inflation one's going to be challenging. We're coming off of maybe Brexit, maybe covid I'm not surprised they've pumped huge amounts of money in the system. Uh, inflation is a function of that. It's fairly simple. Despite all the complexity and the commentary, the situation is fairly simple. The problem and the, the solution, though, is, is maybe harder to fix. This is going to be sticky. So, you know, we've definitely got an inflation challenge. Uh, we've got a huge amount of borrowing that we're probably only starting to really get the full picture on now through the political situation that uh, is now starting to come true. That is the one thing that really will give us a problem is the is the debt. In, in, in a perverse kind of way, inflation erodes the debt, but that's not necessarily a good thing. It, it, it can sort of solve it, but not necessarily in the right way. So I think now we've got a, a very high level of, of, of public borrowing and personal borrowing, actually. Uh, we've got employment starting to, to, to be a little of a concern uh, and we've got an inflation problem. So we've got a number of things. I, I'm... I happen to think and hope that it might be relatively short-lived, a year or two, not a lifetime. But that depends on how we attack it. You know, the, the only real way is to start to control the debt and start to bring that back down. That's going to be painful. Uh, and, and, it's, and, and, and the shorter and quicker we attack it, the better, but it'll be more painful. And that's the dilemma. The political system doesn't allow us to do that, really. But the only real right way is to tackle that that that, that very excess uh, uh, pile of debt that we've built up, paying for everything, and, and we've got to get it back under control and, and move forward. I think something that you said, which I think the viewers will be massively interested in, because the property market and the property business, there's many different ways of approaching how a property business is run. You talk about first principles. I think from my experience in, in the business world, I've always worked on first principles and I looked at the rules of engagement of borrowing and leveraging and actually not over leveraging. And so I think preparing and the regulation and governance that you've put into your particular business, I wouldn't say allows it to be bomb proof, but you have a safety net, unlike many other property businesses that are borrowing large sums of money and 90% loan to value with, with, with no safety net. So that regulation is a good thing for you. Could you talk to us a little bit about the regulation side of, of what you do with properties? Yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, firstly, and we'll come on to regulation, but it's about responsible investing. We, we have a you know, we, we've chosen to devote our time and effort into an area we like, where there's a need, but you've got to do it responsibly. We're working with vulnerable adults, working taxpayer money, pension funds, public pension funds. You know, we really have a duty as a steward of that capital and those homes to do it right. So no amount of regulation is going to stop me from doing a bad or stupid thing. Yeah. But if you are responsible in your own way of working, if you've got integrity and discipline about what you do, you'll comply with that. The regulator is there to ensure that people are doing the right things. And, and we're very, very comfortable with that. And, and, and that regulatory wrapper around our own responsibility and, and discipline, I think gives everyone a comfort that we go about it in the right way. They can sleep at night knowing we're doing everything that they would expect us to do 
to make sure that, that this long-term commitment is, is done in the right way. And, and, and that's exactly where we like to operate. That's exactly where we feel comfortable. Uh, so yeah, governance, and, and as you go through your career, governance, regulation, uh, compliance, uh, assurance, uh, performance, all those things start to matter more. And uh, uh, what becomes clearer through your career is you're relying on people, the controlling mind of business to make good decisions, out the limelight, back to first principles, based on the facts, not an emotional desire to do something with that money. Where it goes wrong is the capital, the capitalist system can go wrong. You know, people can get greedy and start to be motivated to do the wrong thing. But the regulation is there to try and stop that. Uh, we, we're regulated in two ways. We're regulated on the investment side by the FCA. We're a fully regulated wholesale investment manager. Uh, with all the permissions of regulatory capital. So our investors know that we have the sufficient resources, we have the process to do that right. But on the other side, we're regulated by the Regulator for Social Housing, uh, another government department that ensures that the homes we provide are the right standard, the right condition, uh, they, are, they are presented in the right way and they're a home for life. And that we're there with our balance sheet to make sure we continue to deliver that today, tomorrow, in 30 years' time. And so... There's quite a lot. I've worked in the regulated sector all my life. I've worked off what, Ofsted, off Gem, Regulated for Social Housing, FCA. So um, all my career really, and, and this is where I'm at my happiest, is trying to deliver efficiency, productivity, and, and responsible investing in the public sector, but where we use the private sector processes. Like you guys, you do very similar things. And, and hopefully this makes sense, but we try to bring the best of the private sector practices into the public sector to give that an advantage and make sure that our investment goes as far as it can to deliver as much as we can. And I've done that across water, energy, waste, housing, healthcare, education. And I find, uh, I, I find that's where I'm at my best and what I know and, and my values suit that. I try to be institutional, try to be disciplined and, and, I think that's where we need to do more. Those things are where we need to do more. I think some of the uh, beliefs that you that you have, and I know personally we've we've had many chats in the past, Harvey, and and I think that community involvement and wanting to help our local communities thrive is massively important. And could we just drill down a little bit into the strategy of Horizon and the two sort of sectors that you try to serve? Yeah, you're, you're, you're right, Nadim. It's all about community. And, uh, and uh, we set out... I, I did a lot of work, actually, 2008, 2010, around long-term property investment. And, you know, we used the banking markets. They shut down at that point. So what we tried to do was, 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 was approach the institutional equity market and say, look, you know, you like this long-term high-quality income. Uh, we can put it to work in, in good, secure places while doing some good, what we call a positive social impact, uh, which is all about what you can do for the community. So we, uh, the first fund we launched was uh, uh, social housing, especially social housing for vulnerable adults that, that, that historically have been in institutional care and long-term hospital care, but they didn't really need that. They weren't, they weren't uh, right for that either clinically or personally, they weren't benefiting from that. They were just being looked after under the obligation to look after them. That was the only place they could go. So uh, uh, what we call supported living, independent living, um, is is where those certain uh, adults can go into an independent home with a care package. Uh, that is their lifetime home, uh, and and they thrive and flourish. Uh, they they get looked after on what they need with the care package. They they get out and do activities or jobs, um, but they're back home safe in in a a proper institutional quality home, serviced by a care provider, a social housing uh, uh, association, uh, and we provide the home. So put together, that's a very long term commitment, uh, and you know we've rolled out nearly 2,000 of these homes across the UK, across the two uh, funds. And and we take a lot of pride in the fact we've got those people out of institutional care into independent living. And we want to do more of that. So no, That's admirable. And I think that group of people actually prefer and want to be independent, don't they? So you're facilitating the needs of them. And that's massively important. Well, we did a site visit up in... Uh, in, in, in um, 
in Chesterfield uh, a few weeks ago at one of your sites, Nadim, and you, know, you and I come alive at those those sorts of visits. But uh, the best day of the year is where we do our annual, what I call a, a, our a tour of the properties, where we get to meet our residents, where we get to meet our carers, and it's, it's heartwarming. I mean, it, 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 you know, that's the day that reminds you why you do this and why you should do as much as you can and do more. And, um, you know, seeing what you're doing on your property, uh, which is taking something that's a magnificent building. Actually, it's more than that. It's quite substantial. But mm -hmm. that's that's the sort, you, you know, we, we look at those opportunities in the same way. There's a there's a fairly derelict but magnificent building that needs someone to bring it back to life, regenerate it and and, and, and put it to the best use it can. And I know you've got admirable plans for, for care and, and support in there across the whole range of a sort of tenures so we're doing very similar things I think we're wired very similar um, we, we 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 feel good about what we do and, and even speaking about it I'm, I'm just thinking what can I do next to get more of this really and and I hope that some of this message might allow some people to give us a call how can they help how can they get involved principally more capital uh, more good people with our similar ethos that can uh, can take this out so how, how so. would somebody get in touch with you well Email address? Uh, yeah, website our website. Address. I mean, we, we, we're big on the doing. We're not so good at... Um, what, but, but specifically, how would the game? So yeah, Horizon. yeah. So, yeah, there's a Harvey at horizon-infra.com. Um, we, can, we can put some details out, I'm sure, yeah. on the message. Yeah. Uh, and just drop us a line. Come and have a chat. You know, if you share our passion, we can work together. That's it. We're, we're very simple folk, you know. Uh, we, we, we put values at the heart of what we do. If we share the values, we'll be able to work together. And um, Pe People... Uh, fascinating aren't they and you know we, we talk about service users and supporting people to live at home those people cannot live at home without and I, and I call them our care heroes yeah the superheroes the people that were in the front line with the pandemic that risked their own personal safety risked their family's personal safety the challenge presumably, and part of your strategy, because I, I, I know we've talked about this, is to provide uh, affordable accommodation for key workers. And if we don't actually provide that accommodation, it's going to be very, very difficult to deliver those services. So where does that feature in your future? Well, that's back to your first question, or second question about cost of living. I mean, mm. even without the current inflationary position, uh, key workers are finding it very challenging to meet the cost of living. So actually we do some work around uh, uh, the Watford area in West Hearts to do with the NHS and we cannot attract staff because the cost of living barrier is just simply expensive to get somewhere to live. And, and, and so that's a real, real challenge for us. And I think that's something we've all got to try and meet over the next few years in terms of, of how we deliver it, what we deliver, good value, uh, done efficiently, and, and maybe back to that point where we need to make our resources go as far as they can with what we have. You know, there's always a restriction on that. So, yeah, we need to bring back into use properties that, that, that should be and could be used. Uh, we need to look at how, how we deliver that cost-wise and speed-wise. Uh, when you work for yourself, you can make things happen. That's probably the main reason why I like being uh, in this situation is... I, I, can, I don't have to wait for too many people to approve or say yes or discuss or question. I can, within reason, start the day with an idea and get on with it and make real progress uh, by talking direct. And that's why I welcome, you know, give us a call. Don't wait. Don't be too formal. Uh, come and chat. Let's work together and see, and see what we can do. So big challenges. They're growing. But, you know, we, we've, we've done a lot. And uh, we look forward with confidence with that. Actually, with, with there's, there's a lot of a lot of uh, resourceful people with drive that are wired to do good things, and we want to find those people. How do you keep hold of the partners and people that you work with? That's a good good question. We. In terms of our investment, they're naturally very long term. When you when you when you invest or or, or own and, and 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 make available a home, it's generally very long term. And I talked about where my where this uh, journey started, and it took many many years. Uh, and if you remind me, I want to come back to a quick story about my my chairman uh, in terms of the website. Just remind me because that that's that will tell you. But um, it takes time, uh, but it, you also commit long time, and we. And you know this, when you're committing to a property to, to take it over, to refurb, redevelop, regenerate it, you're taking a 30, 50 year at least decision. 
And you've got to live with that decision. You know, when you've pulled that trigger, you've got to sleep at night knowing you've made the right decision. You can't walk out. You can't turn around the next day and say, I, I, actually, I don't like it. I, I've, got to, I've got to call it a day. It's back to my first principles. You've got to really get your homework right, do the, the, the first principles calculations. And so everything we do is long term. We do it for life. And, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever sold anything. Uh, I'm on film, so if I do sell anything, permission to shoot me, I think it's the famous phrase. Uh, it, you know, this is a scale business. We, we want to put proper quality homes, social affordable homes into the public sector, and we want people to make use of them for as long as they can possibly be used. You know, we're not going to call them back. We're not going to sell them. Our commitment is for life. And so naturally, uh, I'm wired for the long term. Um, it, and we're back to that point, really. It's, it's taken a while to get here, but now it's got momentum. And, um, uh, you know, you can't do anything without a reasonably long-term view. And How do you relax, Harvey? Uh, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I think about this stuff while I'm uh, sitting around a bit. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I uh, Hopefully you can see I, I really enjoy it. I, I've, I've, uh, I mean, the other side of what I like from business is, is I like my sport. You know, that's... I grew up with that. That's where I, you may not say relax, but that's where my mind is at its most happy. You know, when I'm, I'm out with people in a team and, and to this day, I still do my, uh, uh, do athletics. I'm still competing. I still coach at a club where I joined, you know, when I was 10 years old. And uh, that's where you'll find me when I'm not working out on the athletics track on a cold Monday night, uh, probably. And I know you guys like your sport as well. And I know Michael's got some pedigree. Uh, so, I mean, I shouldn't necessarily, you know, we should, we, we, we probably share, I mean, and, and, and I quite enjoy it talking about it. You know, one of my first questions to Stuart when he said, I'm from, from the Southwest was, do you follow the rugby? Do you, do you know it's the Chiefs? Because I got property down there. And when I go, I, I turn up at Sandy Park and I watch the rugby with some of the guys down there. So the sport's a big part of my life. Yeah. I think it's no fluke that successful business people uh, love their sport and compete uh, in sport because I think the mindset uh, of being a successful sportsman is very, very similar to being a successful business person. I think that the challenge, um, certainly in the sector that you work in, is building trust, showing that responsibility and accountability um, and having empathy with what you do, certainly when you're looking at providing care facilities. So, uh, great respect to you, Harvey, for what you do. Well, you did, you did mention something about your chairman, and you said you'd come back to it in terms of a website. I do, and I could talk on about sport for a long, long time, but sorry, just final point that I will, but you're right, all the, what I call, and, and I think this is why I, and actually, I, just on that point, you know, when we, and we, touched on how do we keep it all together but when we hire someone we look for those values and if I see a sports career I'm immediately thinking I'm going to probably like this person you know forget their technical training forget the university subject forget that there might be a spreadsheet wizard that helps but we're looking for good values and character and fundamental alignment with the discipline and integrity you need to be a good investor you know, to think like that's your investment, that's your money. Most cases it is, but so I just wanted to come back to that point. But all the skills of, of resilience, discipline, teamwork, uh, dealing with losing, dealing with setbacks, making mistakes, they're all character building. And, and, and as you go through life, I think Steve Jobs said, you join the dots. You join the dots of learning on the, on the pitches of Yorkshire or Hertfordshire or South London. You learn on the frozen Sunday mornings <laughs> when you're eight years old. You learn, that, that, that all. Uh, so anyway, I think we probably said that bit maybe uh, for another day. But yeah, there's one little story. I, I had, a, I had a, 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 a chairman who helped me start Horizon um, and 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 uh, you know, Chris said, "Well, if you do the heavy lifting, I'll I'll make sure you know I'll give you a hand, and we don't do anything wrong." And he said, well, wh "Whatever you do, don't tell anyone we're doing this." He's a very well known, he's a very seasoned, very experienced chairman. He said, "Whatever you do, don't tell anyone we're doing this. Just get started. Uh, if it doesn't work, we'll all just quietly disappear, and no one will know." <laughs> and that's probably the best advice I've ever been given. Don't start putting up the profile, telling everybody what you're doing. Just quietly, every day, get your head down and get on with it. And it'll be 18 months. And you can tell your family and you can tell a couple of friends because they're probably wondering what you're sure. doing. And it's probably the right thing just to tell them what you're working on. But I wouldn't broadcast it. I would wait till you've got some success and let the success speak for itself. And, and that's what Chris said. So on the one hand, it wasn't a vote of confidence. 
But on the other hand, it was uh, Chris is always right. You know, these guys with experience, and and we've got some, but there's more. They just they just know the right way to go about things in a simple way. And, and Chris was right. So don't announce it. Get your head down. Get it moving. Get momentum up. Get some success, and then that will speak for itself. So the point was the website's pretty poor. Our profile is pretty poor. But if you come and see what we're doing with our clients, with our vulnerable adults, with our care partners, with our pension fund investors, I think you like what you see. And, and, that, and that is something to be very, very sort of proud of. So Good news for you. The cat's out of the bag today because your message is going to be out there. Your story is going to be out there after today. Well, it's taken maybe... I think we're in our sixth year at Horizon since fund launch. We're fully invested in Levered, and uh, maybe this is a chance to just tell people what we've done. We've, we've we've got a couple of hundred million of gross assets, you know, across a couple of thousand properties now. Uh, we've got great partners, very stable, uh, very happy. Uh, we 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 don't take anything for granted. We talk to them regularly, and we make sure that that every day we're 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 watching that and making sure that it does what we expected. 30 years from now, 50 years from now. So, um, yeah, maybe it's not a bad time to uh, to say. And, and thanks for the opportunity. That's 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 it's nice yeah, to it's, chat chat it through. And our pleasure. Our pleasure. Yeah, it's amazing to to listen to your strategies. And I'm very interested in the affordable housing market because of those key workers and the people that have risked, and we we need to support them. Absolutely. So, Harvey, we know that you're into sport in a big way, uh, but there is another little area that sort of impacts a number of things not just sport would you like to tell the viewers and listeners what that area is because i know we've had a few conversations about it we have and, and actually that's why we're here our, our, our good friend lawrence finn who's uh part of your setup um i met on the uh the pitches of chiswick rugby club and and so very briefly uh I, you know i got uh, people know i like my sport and 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 someone sent me a, a pair of uh uh, performance grip socks and I sort of looked at them and I think I opened them on the Saturday morning when I was going for my for my for my regular run so I thought I'd put them on I'd go for a run honestly I was I was amazed how a pair of socks could could make quite a difference just the feel the the, the security of them make so, you run faster uh yeah faster <laughs> uh right more secure you feel like your foot is at one with your shoe and I run off road I run around the hills of, of Hertfordshire um the farms and the fields and so yeah, you can feel it. It's a good testing ground. And, and I think halfway through, because I've always got my phone with me just in case. I'm at an age now where you've got to have a, a mobile in case you fall or something happens. Um, hopefully you know what I'm thinking. And so I've got, I've got my phone with me and I, I think I t- texted. Uh, I said, these, these are fantastic. Uh, What's the make of them? Sorry, where, where, where can I get them in the UK? So you're going to distribute them for us. So, but then a bit more. But the, the makeup is there. Uh, it's quite complicated. I'm not the technical side, sure. uh, but um, there's a there's a there's a blend of different materials that give you the 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 comfort, the durability, and the performance. But the key part is there are some very uh, soft, grippy silicone uh, pads woven in and molded in, uh, and that is what uh, uh, fixes the foot. To the shoe via the sock, so there's no friction, there's no movement, there's no loss of energy. And are, and are those, science is really simple. Sorry. And and, is, and are those on the base and the sole of the foot? Yes. Do they go around the sides of the foot. They go on top of the foot. Where, where are they? Yeah, pretty, pretty much on the base, on the sole. They 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 curl up a bit so that they get the full grip. They're quite anatomically designed. They're they're, they're quite a serious bit of of, of R and D. Uh, we're constantly refining them. There's a breathable section on the top, uh, but this goes right. So a simple pair of socks can really change your game. You'll be amazed. Uh, I'll, I'll get you a pair. I'll make sure you have got some. Lawrence is in them. His son plays professional. He's in them. And uh, this was something we started in January ourselves. Uh, so we've got our own manufacturing. Uh, uh, we're distributing. It's, it's fun. I do things that are fun. And I, I get to just spend a lot of my time talking to good sports people uh, at, at professional level. We've got a number of Premier League football players, uh, Premier League rugby player, Premiership rugby players. We've got athletes, my sport in them. Daily, uh, Daily Thompson, Sally Elliott Thompson won the British decathlon title in them. Yes. That's, on, that's on BBC. You can see this stuff. So we're getting them out there. We're, we're enjoying talking to, to all the sports people we can and, and um, we're enjoying it. Is the, is the mission to uh, reduce injuries then? Does it help reduce injuries in, in your feet? Yeah, I mean, the first one is, is uh, uh, blister reduction. I mean, there's just no movement. So without friction, you can't blister. So that's the first Fantastic. one. Um, you just got more grip. So, you know, you're going to find more sure-footed and assured and, 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 and stabilised. 
um, we try to let people try them. They do their own talking, sure. you know. Um, 10, 15 quid, whatever we uh, discount them out. I'm sure we can get you some uh, something to try them. Uh, just put them on. We, we, I, we've never had a bad piece of feedback on them. People just like them. They instantly get it. They love, they love it in them. We've had people running London Marathon last week. And uh, we're, 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 we're gathering some momentum. So the, the mission is we love our sport. We, we, we enjoy it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business partner and I, um, a guy who's been quite big in, uh, in, in tag rugby and sevens rugby and, and tennis. Uh, we love working with sports people. Um, we're not really doing it for the commercial side, but it's a brand we'd like to grow. Which and is? What's the brand uh, Gripworks. Gripworks. Gripworks uh, Socks. We're on the socials and um, the website. Uh, quite the flip to Horizon is that this is very much a... a, a consumer brand so we've done some work and Kenny's very good at that so yeah the, the mission really is to get socks out there get them on as many feet as we can they will change your game and, and hopefully people will, will, will like what they, they do the different uh, lengths of socks yeah 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 there's three or four we've got an ankle so for runners I mean I okay. crew tennis sock um, we've got compression fitting now which means you, you know you've got the added benefit of compression around the ankle so who thought a sock could be so technical? But wow. it, it, when you think everybody wears them, everybody plays sport in them, and, and there's, a, there's, there's a lot of feet You sell there. them on your website and Amazon, presumably? Yeah, website, Amazon. Uh, I've always got, well, not today, but I've normally got a few pairs with me. Uh, and, yeah, uh, you'll find us, Scriptworks Socks, uh, on the social, Scriptworks Performance Socks. And, um, you know, we're straight supplying uh, direct to the consumer. So, um uh, plenty of uh, images, plenty of testimonials, plenty of technical profiles. Um, give them a try, and and you know if, if you don't like them, we'll give you your money back for sure. We've never done that, but um, we uh, we. If they don't like improve your golf, Michael, <laughs> you can blame golf? the socks. Golf, yeah, they're, they're quite. They're getting, I'll get your pair. I mean, I should have brought some. Tennis, but, golf, tennis and golf, perfect. You're yeah. our perfect clients, perfect okay. customers. <laughs> So uh, that's a little aside, you know, uh, certain things come along and you just get the chance to, to talk about sport, talk with sports guys and um, that's, get to do what you enjoy with people you like. And so, wow. What a fantastic it. story this morning. Two, two areas of your, your business life and sport and the socks as well. Harvey, thanks ever so much for coming in this morning. It's gone like lightning this morning. We've done half an hour, which feels like two minutes. You said it would, and you're right. You know, and very enjoyable, and you know we we, we enjoy working together. And uh, there's another step forward today, so yeah, it's awesome. really good. Yeah. So, listeners and viewers out there, another amazing series in our podcast. And until next time, 